So dear students, uh, we are going to start the second phase of our project management course, that is project planning. And from management, you have learned about planning, you know how to define planning. And if we elaborate the word planning, it means some pre, that is pre, some predetermined rules and regulations, predetermined policies and procedures. Why policies and procedures? Because that will guide you to accomplish your task properly. So planning is just like a guidelines. Planning helps to follow some predetermined guidelines. So when we talk about project planning, so these planning means some rules, regulations, policies, and procedures that are decided earlier so that one can accomplish project task, maintaining time, maintaining cost, and maintaining quality because we know that we have basically three objectives of any project. What are these three objectives? We want to accomplish our project within time, within budget, and also we want to ensure quality of our project. Can you remember the objectives? Or you forgot? quality process. So when we talk about project planning, uh, one can ask you that why project planning? Why you need to provide attention at the time of making a plan? Simply, we have a common belief. You know, what is the common belief? That if you have a very good plan. If you have a very good plan, we, we say, if you have a very good plan, it means it is the 50% of your task. So when you go for project planning, obviously, obviously, you must be careful, you must spend more time on planning. If you spend less time on planning and starts your task, obviously you have to suffer in the middle of the task. So it's better spend more time at the beginning. That is while you are passing planning period, at the time of planning period, spend more time. Take one day, one week, even one month, even six months. That will help you to start properly because we know that a good plan equals 50% of the job. So what we have within the plan, the primary purpose of planning is to establish a set of directions in enough detail to tell the project team exactly what must be done. So you see that these are predetermined rules, predetermined regulations, predetermined policies and procedures, what is known as a set of directions, what you will start first, what will be the second, what will be the third, when you have to recruit staff, when you have to recruit engineers, architect, these all are decided earlier so that you can go ahead maintaining time, maintaining cost, and also ensuring quality. So for this, when we are passing project planning phase or we are passing initial phase of a starting a project, it is crucial, it's really important to have a project launch meeting. Why you need a project launch meeting? It's one kind of coordination meeting. It's one kind of coordination. 
where you will find all the project related people are working together and you will find them uh, in one place and then you can discuss with them you can you can you can you can train them uh, you can guide them you can uh, listen to them and all can share their opinion all can share their experiences from where you can have a very good start and it says the project launch meetings success is absolutely dependent on the existence of a well-defined set of objectives so at this stage at initial stage while we are pressing planning phase there are some important points you must keep in your mind if you really want to be a very good project manager and what the outcome related to project launch meeting so the outcomes should be like this you have to explain technical scope uh, that you want to be established that is technical scope then basic areas of performance and it's the responsibility and then some tentative overall schedules budgets etc you have to consider so technical scope is you know that a project must have a fixed life there is no project known as without life so your scope is related to life then a project must related to uh stop so so you you have you have staff related planning you you can't recruit unlimited people you have capital so your scope is related to capital or budget so these way what are the technical scope related to this project that is uh, what's the life how many staffs are going to work what is the budget and etc can be fixed earlier and then areas of performance that what will be considered as performance that is called standard so it it's you you need to fix your standard first standard so that when the project will continue then you can compare your progress with the standard and find out the gap so if you have a standard if you have a standard then you can compare your progress with the standard and then you can find out the gap that will help you to take necessary measures otherwise if you have no predetermined standard at the end of the project you will find that your project is not successful one and that's why in a project plan in a project launch meeting these are the important points tentative overall schedule means what task 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 one task two you will have beginning time of task one beginning time of task two ending time of task one ending time of task two these all will be clearly written clearly defined so that three four tasks if you have to start together you can start this and you know that there are some tasks are very much related to prior task means if you don't start task one you cannot start task three like if you have a renovation project of a classroom so you can't start electric electricity related task before you build the building so you see that you need to build the building where you have all the wearing system or if you call a painter first so he or she has to wait for a long time because painting is the last job so if you have some tentative overall schedule and budget are spelled out that will really guide you to go ahead as per your plan
Uh, have you heard the word composite plan? So when a uh, composite plan is word, you know that you have, I said you have uh, so many tasks there. Uh, we know about uh, work breakdown structure uh, in our earlier study. So work breakdown structure, you are breaking your work into small parts. And for accomplishing each part, you have separate plan. So you have plan related with human resource management. You have plan related with technology. You have finance and accounts department. You have uh, uh, procurement. You have MIS. So these way you have so many department and composite plan is what each, each, each individual unit accepting responsibility for a portion of the project should agree to deliver a preliminary plan about how that responsibility will be accomplished. So you have so many individual plan and when you accumulate all these plan in one plan that will be a composite plan. So these individual or unit related duties and responsibilities can be accumulated and then you will have composite plan. These plans should contain descriptions of the required task and estimates of the budgets and schedules means when we in, in, in what weeks or in, in which month the task will start and in which month the task will finish or how many days the task will take to reach to an end. Then you have to scrutinize these plans are then scrutinized by the group and combined into one plan, combined into one plan. So you all separate plans will be in uh, will, will combine by a group of people or by the project manager or by the project team that will be known as composite project plan. So simply success of a project depends on work breakdown structure and then individual plan or unit based plan or plan as per department then a group of project uh, officers under the leadership of project manager will combine all these plan into one plan and what is known as composite plan. Some points that we must keep in our mind at the time of doing or presenting composite plan. What it is that the composite plan is still not completely firm, is approved by each participating group, by the project manager and then by senior organizational management. So here we use the word stakeholders. Remember, I am writing one word that is stakeholders. Stakeholders means who are directly who are directly or indirectly benefited from the project so once project manager agreed with the composite plan a group of officers or people who are involved with the plan they agreed on this it means not that the project plan is final because you have project owner, you have government, you have city corporation, you have bank, insurance companies. So these way, so many stakeholders are involved with the project and they are directly or indirectly benefited from the project. So if there are some approval agencies exist, like owner, owner. So owner is approval agency. Owner has to agree on 
your plan on a team plan like this plan should be uh, uh, satisfy the government rules and regulation or requirement. And if you have financing plan that should be approved by banks, policies and procedures. So this way, a composite plan, once you have taken, is not the final until this is approved by related relevant approval agencies. And then what each subsequent approval hardens the plan and when senior management has endorsed it any further changes in the project's scopes must be made by the processing a formal change order so following all the steps once it is approved you can say yes our composite plan is ready but it means not that it is a robotic plan it is fixed. The country uh, has COVID problem. We have cyclone problem. We have so many different contingency uh, we have. So it means not that under any circumstances, you can't change your project plan. No, your project, a good project plan is flexible. Flexible means when political, economic, technological, social factors are changing, you must have a scope in your plan to add or subtract necessary elements with the plan. So, now we can conclude the final approved result of this procedure is the project plan, also known as a master or baseline plan. Now, a planning phase is complete. Now you can go to post planning review. Review, because what we say, a good project plan is flexible means with the changes of environmental factors you have a scope to add or subtract some elements of the plan you can change budget or you can change human resource plan you can change your techniques tactics or strategies are to accomplish predetermined goals and objectives.